Okay, welcome back to Economics. This is Dr. Kling, and I'm going to talk about the tools of monetary policy. Now, traditionally in the textbook, there are three tools. Uh, the first one is called open market operations. And that's what we talked about last time. That's where if the Fed wants to do an expansion, um, so this is number one open market operations. So if it wants to expand, then it buys treasury securities by creating reserves. So that's the expansion. And if it wanted to contract, it would do the opposite. So contraction it would be selling treasury securities. And thereby reducing available reserves to the private banking system. Okay, so that's open market operations. That's <coughs> the first tool. The second tool is reserve requirements. So if the Fed if the Fed lowers reserve requirements, what happens? Banks hold fewer reserves and make more loans. So we see more loans, fewer reserves, and therefore more money supply expansion, M1. So <coughs> that's expansion. For contraction, it would raise reserve requirements. Okay, so that's policy number two. And the third tool is, so tool number three is the discount rate. So when, uh, when banks are caught short on reserves, they can borrow from the Fed to meet their reserve requirement, but they pay a penalty called the discount rate. Actually, it often isn't much of a penalty, but uh, we can think of it as a penalty. Um, so they pay a, a, they have to pay the discount rate. So when the discount rate is low, then banks don't hold excess reserves because they're not afraid of being penalized so if they end up a little short so be it they'll they'll borrow cheaply because the rate is low and so <coughs> they make more loans because they're not holding any excess reserves and so M1 is higher. So you can have a contractionary policy by raising the discount rate. So when the Fed raises the discount rate uh, that's contractionary. So those are the traditional three tools of monetary policy. Um, <coughs> again, if we, I, I mentioned that Marcia Stigham, uh, Stigham's money market book gives a, a, a better description of how the Fed actually operates. They're really uh, undertaking repurchase agreements. So instead of buying securities, buying treasury securities, what the Fed will do will be, so call this tool number four, I'll call this tool number four, 
repo agreements. And so what the Fed will do will, will be to lend to securities dealers <coughs> holding securities as collateral collateral and what this will do is this has the effect of pushing down the lending rate in the interbank market known as the federal funds or fed funds rate so that's just one little interest rate in the economy it's a very short term interest rate on the on the very lowest risk type of lending lending from one bank to another and that rate is called the federal funds rate or the fed funds rate and the fed manipulates that <coughs> by lending so if the fed wants to lower that interest rate the fed will step in and make its own loans to security dealers and if it uh, doesn't want if it wants the fed funds rate to rise then it makes fewer loans so the contractionary policy would be fewer loans to dealers to security dealers which pushes up the Fed funds rate since they have to go and borrow elsewhere in the market. And so their demand for borrowed funds is going to push up the Fed funds rate. So that's actually how the, how, uh, the Fed really operates. Lately there have been some other tools introduced. Um, you've heard, you may, you will hear the term quantitative easing often done QE and that's where <coughs> the Fed buys uh, se securities that it wouldn't ordinarily buy uh, not ordinarily bought by the Fed uh, examples have included uh, mortgage securities to try to make the mortgage securities market trade better. Uh, more recently, long term treasuries, whereas before it was doing short term. <coughs> Another thing the Fed has done is pay interest on reserves. So that affects banks willingness to hold excess reserves. If they're being paid interest on reserves that affects their willingness to hold excess reserves. So something to think about is what's the effect if the inter if they if the Fed reduces the interest rate on reserves is that expansionary contractionary and vice versa. So that's another tool. So we've got this tool, quantitative easing, we've got paying interest on reserves. Um, <coughs> other potential tools, although this would be difficult institutionally for the Fed to do because I don't think it's, it's uh, necessarily within its uh, purview. It might have to work with the Treasury. Uh, it could buy foreign currency. So um, that would be, so basically anything, pretty much anything that the Fed buys, so anytime the Fed buys, whatever it buys, uh, it tend, that's <coughs> usually expansionary. It's printing money or creating reserves in order to do that. So that's, uh, so it has that tool available. So there's, um, you know, it could buy houses. I, you know, again, I'm not sure legally what the uh, restrictions are on the Fed, but in principle, uh, 
anything it buys could uh, expand the money supply. So I think that's all I want to do on tools of monetary policy.